Hello class 12th. Welcome to the online tutorial sessions for economics. I am Avnash Lambert, your economics guru and today we are going to start the new chapter which is money and banking which is the fourth chapter of your macroeconomics. So students let's start with the new chapter money and banking. Now students first of all before starting the money you must know about the history of money. So for knowing to understand the history of money, the evolution of money, you must know about the barter system which was previously in our history it was prevalent. Before the use of money, the system was of barter system and that system was prevailed in the whole world. Now, what was that system? What is barter system? Now, it is a system where exchange of goods, it is a system where exchange of goods for goods takes place without the use of money. It is a system where people exchange goods with the other goods and there is no use of money. And this is also known as CC economy where C stands for commodity and the another C also stands for commodity. So that means commodity for commodity economy. So basically, what is barter system? Under barter system, people exchange goods with the other goods or in short, we can say commodity for commodity. Now, in the history, the barter system was prevalent. No problem with that. But there were certain limitations which held the barter system down. Now, let's continue with the topic and let's start with the limitations of barter system one by one. Now the first limitation was the lack of double coincidence of wants. Now suppose you have your mobile phone and you need to exchange your mobile phone with someone else's laptop. Now you are searching for a Dell company's laptop and you have a iPhone. Now in that scenario you will be searching for that person who is having a Dell's company's laptop and in return he wants exactly your iPhone. Now it will be very difficult for you to search exactly that person who is holding the Dell's company's laptop and in return he wants the exactly your mobile which is of iPhone. So it will become very difficult for you to search that person. So what is double coincidence of wants? It means at point of time the two individuals are in the possession, they are having such goods which they are willing to exchange for the satisfaction of your wants. They want to exchange their goods which they have possessed, which they already have to the other person. Now, to find such specific person who is holding exactly what you need and in return what he wants, exactly what you have, so it is very difficult to find such specific person. Fine. So it is very difficult such specific person which has the same commodity which you want and you are having the same commodity which he wants. So that is the lack of double coincidence of wants. Understood? Now, lack of common measure of value. The second limitation was lack of common measure of value. It was very difficult understand with this. All commodities are not equal value. You all know that. That all the commodities are not having the same values. And there is no common unit of value of goods and services in which exchange ratios can be expressed. Now, can you measure wheat with cloth? Do you have any common measure with the help of you can convert wheat or cloth? You can exchange? You cannot. Because wheat is measured in kgs and cloth is measured in meters. Now, you cannot have the exact measure unit to exchange these goods. So, it is it was very difficult at that time to how much amount of wheat to be exchanged for the how much length of cloth. Or you can say if I am having two buffaloes and in return I want 10 bags of wheat. Now, it would be very difficult for me to exchange those buffaloes with the wheat because for that person maybe 
two buffaloes are not sufficient for the exchange of wheat so in that case it was very difficult for those people because the value of goods is not equal and there was no common unit of measure so that they can calculate the goods now the third one is lack of standard of deferred payment now students deferred payment means the amount which you are going to pay in the future you took away the goods you purchased the goods but that was a credit purchase you have not paid that person but in that period and in the history there were deferred payments in which you exchanged the good you took the other person's good and in return you asked him to wait for one month i will give you back what i promised you now it was very difficult to make deferred payment in the form of goods what were the problems there were three problems while having the deferred payment that is future payments first of all the borrower may not be able to arrange goods for exact same quality at the time of repayment suppose someone promised to give fine quality of wheat in the exchange of two horses fine now when he did the agriculture there was no sufficient water for him there was no irrigation so whatever the crop grown was not of that perfect quality now when he will bring those bag of wheat to the person which from which he has exchanged the horses he will ask him these are not those qualities which i asked for so in that case the quality which was promised is not there and therefore the borrower may not be able to arrange the exact same quality at the time of repayments now next one there may be conflicts regarding which specific commodity is to be used for repayments again let's take an example of agriculture suppose i promised him to give the wheat but instead of wheat i suddenly change the plan and i grow some rice now i brought rice to him but he said i asked for wheat but that not the exact uh, thing which i asked for you are bringing rice to me so in that case it is not the exact specific commodity and in that case the borrower may have conflict with the person which he has exchanged the goods now the third one is the commodity to be repaired may lose its gain or value at the time of repayment suppose someone promised me to exchange my bike with the iphone now i waited for some time and when time came the value of iphone iphone become degraded students the third one is the commodity to be repaired may lose or gain its value at the time of repayment suppose i exchange my bike with the iphone and the person who was supposed to give me the iphone promised me to give me the iphone after 3 months fine but after 3 months the value of iphone went very down the value of iphone became very less now at that time that iphone is not worthy for me i don't want that iphone at that time because what i am giving to him is of much utility than the iphone at that present time so in that case the commodity which i exchange and in return what i am supposed to get may lose its or gain its value at the time of repayment so in that case the borrower may have some conflicts or may have some issues and the fourth one is lack of store of value it was very difficult for the people at that time to store those goods to store to store wealth in the form of goods is difficult for people to store your wealth in the form of goods you can hide your cash inside your home under your pillow under the inside the almira or in very secretive places but to store the wealth in the form of goods that's a very difficult task so most of the goods like wheat rice vegetables etc do not possess durability these are those goods which have a very small shelf life they don't last forever they are just for one one or two days or one week that's it after one week they are of no use so to keep them as store as well they this is not a good idea because they do not possess durability that is its quality goes down with the passage of time because their shelf life is low its quality goes down with the time after the time goes and go, goes their shelf life is very low and therefore their quality goes low and they are of no use now also 
स्टोरेज रिक्वायर्स टाइम एंड एफर्ट टू स्टोर फ्यू थिंग्स टू स्टोर दिस वैल्यूज ऑफ गुड्स यू नीड सो मच टाइम यू नीड सो मच एफर्ट्स सो इट इज अ वेरी इट वॉज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर दो पीपल एट द टाइम ऑफ हिस्ट्री टू स्टोर गुड्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ वेल्थ बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ द गुड्स डोंट हैव मच शेल्फ लाइफ एंड देयर फॉर देयर क्वालिटी गोज डाउन इन दैसेज ऑफ टाइम नाउ the fifth one fifth one is lack of system of transfer of goods it was very difficult imagine a scenario it would be very difficult to transfer your saving from one place to another imagine at that time somebody's son is living in some other area and he wants his father to give him some of his saving so that he can survive in that area would it be possible for the father to send to transfer his wealth which is in the form of goods how will he able to transfer his wealth to his son is that possible no it was very difficult to transfer his savings from one place to another and as well as it would be very expensive too suppose you are having 10 or 50 bags of wheat how you will transfer those bags to your place it would be very difficult at that time it was very difficult because there was no such transportation facilities so it was very difficult to transfer goods or transfer your saving or your wealth from one place to another now let's come to the next topic which is evolution of money let's let's come to the last topic for this video which is evolution of money money has evolved through different stages according to time place and circumstances the time place and circumstances has pressured the barter system to convert into money and money has also evolved from different stages now during the barter system there was agricultural products or animal animals cattle which were used for the exchange of goods now but these agricultural products and the cattles were very difficult and they were cannot be stored agricultural products they have a very limited shelf life therefore they cannot be stored for a longer period therefore the agricultural product were converted into metallic coins people came to metallic coins of copper iron but these metallic coins were of very heavy weights therefore they shifted to the silver and gold coins which were a bit lighter weight but the manufacturers were not able to provide the full supply to the people because they were very limited gold and silver is found in very limited quantity therefore they were shifted to the paper currency which you are having right now inside your pocket under your pillow in your almira or your purse or anywhere else so that is the paper currency which you are having right now so after 1930 onwards we were shifted to the paper currency or paper money fine but we still evolved and we came to the plastic money which is the last stage right now in the plastic money there are debit cards credit cards which are used to pay the money electronically so these are the evolution these are the stages agriculture products after that metallic coins after that silver and gold coins after that paper currency and the plastic money so students that's all for today's lecture today's video and you have studied about the barter system its limitations and the evolution of money we will see you in the next video see you soon students